I was also looking at, um, you know, the Rift Valley, we have the escarpment and we have the highlands. Uh, so I was looking at a particular place called Captagat Forest, which, uh, which is a catchment area and uh, drains its, uh, its waters to the Kerio Valley, to the valley. Yeah, so I'm, I'm, I'm still in the preliminary stages. Uh, I'm, I'm still trying to have a look at uh, the, the changes, the vegetation changes over time uh, since 2013. So I have started and I was in the process of uh, exporting uh, whatever I got from Digital Earth Africa, exporting it to QGIS, Quantum GIS, so that, that I can be able to analyze it further. You know, now for, for, for us, when I show you the one from Digital Earth Africa, you can understand it. But you know, for a layman, it will be a bit difficult for them to understand what is happening. So I wanted to annotate it and uh, uh, at least make it visually pleasing for people to understand uh, what I'm talking about. Yeah, for, uh, now from the, from the DEA platform, Sandbox, I was able to see places where uh, there has been change that is positively or negatively. Uh, places where uh, vegetation has increased and also places where vegetation has decreased in that uh, Captagat forest. Yeah. Oh, thank you very much, uh, Stephen. Coril, uh, on that uh, use case for Kerio Valley, I think uh, you said uh, the export was the issue and I was trying to see how I could show you how that one happens. Uh, so the, the best part because of your, your availability and time is that uh, I'll just share what I have on my screen. Okay. So that we can see if uh, you are seeing the same things on your side. So pretty much this is the, this will be the notebook of which I was trying to demo uh, another one which is similar to yours, uh, pretty much running on Landsat 8. Uh, so here you can choose to have the LAT and long and buffer or the LAT X and Y, then the years, and uh, your region was able to load. Were you able to reach this point? Yes, I was able to load and also uh, to view the, 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 the changes. Then uh, step number five, you had a cloud cover of 70% or 90. Or at least you're using the default notebook. Which should be. I, I was using the. Uh, I created a composite. Okay. Uh, I think the composite now uh, picked some good pixels that do not have cloud cover. Okay. Yes. Then uh, you're able to see these steps, step number seven. Uh, I, I think I have to look at uh, this notebook because I think the one the, the steps that I'm using are a bit different. Okay. I think I I kind of used quite a different approach to the same. So 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 one chance is if your notebook is here, you can just uh, uh, download it and just share with that with us. Okay, 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 I'll It'll do It'll be that. a little bit easier to follow up and see where you're no. stuck. Okay, okay, I'll do yeah. that. Oh, thank you very much, yes. Stephen Correll. At least you have the coordinates of the area, which is also important, yeah. and you are, yeah, I do. You are, you're familiar with the area you're looking at. Yes. You know, the, 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 the only problem that I had was the, the exporting part, because I wanted to export it to QGIS, so yes. I could uh, analyze it further, yeah. So still on the same, uh, could just go back to the same notebook and uh, show you uh, the steps below the almost towards the end. I think you shared with me something. You almost reached this point, and it yes, means you have yes. it, will, it will be able to export two files. Could you go back uh, up a bit? 
there's something like calculating percentage change. Yes. Oh, I think I'll do that also. Okay. Not done that. Yeah. Okay. So on the export, this one should come somewhere on your uh, on this side, and uh, we can now be able to load it in your QGIS. Yep, that's possible. Uh, so yeah. So otherwise, uh, thank you very much, Stephen. Uh, we are joined by Stella. Yes, yes, Corin. No, I was just saying, uh, I had gone through some dailies from the past uh, that uh, was highlighting uh, the dangers or what is happening in these forests, particularly the Kaptagat forests and other forests along the escarpment of the Rift Valley. So that is one thing that prompted me. The other thing is when, you're, when we are looking at pastoralists in the Kerio Valley, they kind of depend on these catchment areas uh, for, for water. Yeah, so those are some of the things that prompted me to try and have a look at uh, uh, the, the changes on the highlands. And, and, and yeah. Mm. Ken has disappeared. He's going for coffee. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I had a small in, uh, visitor, so I had to <laughs> separate the two toddlers. Otherwise, it would be very interesting session that you're having. So I heard okay. about the area you're looking at, Capital Guard Forest, and uh, that is similar to some stuff that you've done, like with the Mao Forest. I could just show you this. Uh, PowerPoint, which shows you something like will be of interest. So looking at this, uh, these are pretty much the two files like exported and uh, you're able to visualize and actually zoom into a certain area. Then the good thing that you talk about the QGIS is that you'll be able to load the like in the version 218 you can load the uh, bing maps and you're able to see the exact area and try to bring it out uh, for communication with your the stakeholders i think that is what you are looking at at the end of it all yes yes yeah yeah so that is very much achievable so we'll be able to work with you especially if you share the file then you see okay. where we are stuck and uh, yes, yeah Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Stephen, for joining us. Uh, welcome, Stella. Do you have any updates for us? No, I was finishing on Makwedi County report writing. However, based on our discussion yesterday, I saw you placed uh, the urban, urban growth hotspot analysis notepad. Uh, yes, it's one of those things that I'd really like to try because in Lesotho, the current one that I'm supposed to be working on by tomorrow, we have some catchment areas within IFAD. And what they want to understand is how to determine the influence of population increase around the subcatchment areas in each subconstituency, which there are 80 of them. And so it's something that I'm still trying to understand how to go about the 80 catchment areas and understand the influence of population increase on the subcatchment areas. And so for me, the urban growth hotspot analysis is one of them, though your input will be highly recommended. Anyone who can give me more analysis I can do about it would be very helpful. Yes, I can see also Edward is happy to comment that uh, the urbanization notebook is running. And any highlights for Stella Edwards, sir? Oh, no, I think, um, sorry, Ken. Um, so Stella, I think you, you can run it over the area you want to work with. Um, the only challenge that we are currently facing is some, sometimes most, some of the data are mixing. So if you encounter such a problem, just let us know. Um, with, with that data, then you work on those areas. But so far, since I checked the notebook, everything is working properly, and you can also use it. 
use it. But if you encounter like some areas, some data can't be read, <clears throat> just let us know. Okay. Okay, fine. I'll do so then I'll, I'll inform you. Thank you, Edward. Thank you very much, Edward. So, uh, Eric, uh, Lawrence Kanga from RCMAD, please greet us. Hi, everyone. And uh, apologies for joining a bit late. <laughs> uh, I was just doing something else and I discovered it's already past two. Um, I was running the chlorophyll. Uh, concentration notebook. I tried in some of the areas. Then I discovered something called dusk cluster. <laughs> and I think I, I talked a bit with Edward in order maybe he can explain. Um, I, I asked whether that it has been discussed before. Uh, so, because I think this can really mm -hmm. assist us if you're running on a bigger area, how you can apply this and maybe now be able to run the bigger portions as clusters. Yes, that's, that's Edward, sir. Edward, over to you. Uh, okay, so I think um, yesterday Lawrence and I communicated about this dark array and how to use it. So uh, as part of today's agenda, I wanted to add it to the discussion on how, uh, when one should use dark and when one shouldn't use dark. Um, so to be part of the discussions today and we can know how best we can utilize that uh, functionality within the sandbox. So, Lawrence, we discussed much about it and also where you can find more tutorials on that also. I'll show you during when I'm talking about it also. Thank you very much, Edward. Uh, Eric Mwala, please uh, greet us and tell us how you, you've received your certificate and how things are going with D Africa. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Hello, Ken. Um, thank you. Um, I was able to go to some some study. I chose. Let me, can I share my screen with you? Uh, I I look at this study area uh, in Ghana. It's called a uh, Barakese Dam. is 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 on a Fin River. Uh, you can see the dam, and it extends. You can see some portion. Are covered with, uh, I think, uh, water weed also. So I was looking at them. Um, I mean, what has happened to it? I mean, for some period now, whether there has been extension in terms of this water weed. So I look at the water extent. So I use the water water extent uh, scripts uh, for that. So uh, this is the area. Uh, that I choose. So I run the script and these were some of the results in terms of the time series from 2013 to 2019. Looking at the observed water area and you can see there is there are some fluctuations and other, other times uh, an increase in terms of uh, the water area. And other results also was uh, to look at the minimum and maximum water extent. Um, uh, so the minimum period happened within uh, 2019 line, and the uh, maximum happened uh, 2018 uh, December. So these are the last half images uh, in terms of uh, those areas and how they look. They look at uh, within those uh, periods. And what we have here is the, anim the animation of uh, the period from 2013 to 19 in terms of uh, the water extent. Then we also have here uh, the water extent for the areas in, in two in, in those two periods, uh, the the minimum period and the maximum period, we can see here is shorter, here sort of a bit longer. I mean, even though there, there isn't much, you can't see much, but you can see that there's a bit of difference in terms of the shape of the, uh, the reservoir. Mm. 
So, I mean, uh, these are the, the shape when it was uh, minimum. That's the, the water extent. Then the, the maximum extent. And there was a change of the, the there was a calculation, which was one, one of the results, which look at um, in terms of uh, water to water uh, is 6.7%, water to no water, those are the yellow spots, and water to no water, uh, the green part, the no water. So this, I mean, this is what I look at uh, because that piece is very important because it is a that that reservoir serves the Kumasi region, the, the Kumasi city, which is within the Ashanti region. Yes, yeah, so uh, I was trying to look at um, what I may extend because it means that if we look at the area, if the area is shrinking, that means the reservoir water within the reservoir is also reducing. So that means. Uh, what can we do in terms of decision making? What can we do to really ensure that we maintain or increase uh, this water body? So this is what I look at. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you very much, Eric Mola. This is very uh, nice. At least something you know and uh, you have some information about the area. I think also Edward has been to Kumasi. So any reactions from Edward or Rogus or other members in the group? Uh, so much. Actually, actually, I do. So I was gonna, just going to show you guys something that my guys are working at. Um, a sneak preview, if you will. Um, so can, you, can I share my screen? Sure. Then let me, let me zoom, stop sharing. Okay. Yeah. So Eric, uh, we were thinking about use cases like yours. So I, I have a team that uh, prototypes uh, concepts. And I was wondering if this would be of interest to you guys. So we're, we're working on, it's not quite ready yet. We're working on this water extent visualizer. So we pass it the extra ray. So this is another lake. And what we've done is we've turned the Z dimension, uh, time into the Z dimension. So we had the water extent and we're actually, instead of doing the animation, we can kind of zoom in and see that, you know, maybe at this time period, there was no data, it was full of NANDs, and we can, uh, you know, uh, kind of get a better feel for how the water extents have changed over time. Um, and, you know, can, uh, the, the toolkit we're using allows us to do things like change the opacity. I don't know if that's necessarily valuable understanding the data, but um, so this is something that if there is interest, we can develop a little bit further and um, incorporate it into the sandbox with, you know, I haven't even shown this to Cedric yet. You guys are the first people outside my team to see it, but I thought it would be interesting to see that. Okay. Okay, so. so. Yeah, so, so um, uh, in the Z, that means uh, you, you have the profile of the depth over a, uh, over a cross section no. or? No, this is not the depth. This is actually the water extent. This is exactly what you are okay. looking at. And for a different lake, but the Z is the time. So basically, every um, so hold on, let me let me turn up the opacity. So basically, every layer of this is another snapshot of water extent in time. Okay, 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 okay. So you know, maybe like three three visits uh, ago, there was a, there was something, and you know, then then there was. Uh, a time where we didn't actually acquire good data, you know, five or six uh, visits ago, there was a time where we didn't acquire good data and, you know, there was higher water extent. So this, okay. is, this is something we want to make available in the sandbox. So we can, and with an example notebook, so we can use it for analyses like this, just to visualize your results anyway. Okay. So if there's interest, I'll talk to Cedric and see if we can incorporate this. We like to look at things like this. So anyway, but yeah, very, very good analysis there. That's very relevant. Thank you very much, August. I think uh, Eric is very excited and he could present something like this to the managers and policymakers. They'll be able now to listen to him for policy and also uh, enforcement. Uh, Edward, any addition? Oh. Yeah, it's fine, everything is fine. I think Eric has done a great job and uh, what I was thinking of trying other indices also to see how best you can actually get the results of so using Sentinel because this one was between Landsat and the WAVs. So if I can also try using Sentinel 
was to also see the results of how the, the, the results from the image. That was also good, really great. But great job, Barry. Thank you. I'll look at that one as well. So thank you very much, uh, Eric. Uh, we are very happy and also looking forward to further engagement to see how we can actually uh, do much, much more for you and the Water Resources Commission in Ghana. Thank you so much. Uh, we are joined by David from RC Madi. Please greet us and tell us how things are going. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm, I'm doing well, thank you. I've been trying to run some, some things for Nairobi, but it seems like either the images are not there or the script uh, is not uh, working properly. I've been in touch with Edward on that, but uh, he promised me as soon as it's corrected, then uh, I should be able to, to run uh, the analysis that I want. Uh, sorry for that, so David. I think Edward has a, yeah, something, yes. Yeah, sorry for that, David. So, David, I think the image, some some of the images, the pixel images within that particular area are not there, so it's being resolved. So once that is done, it will it will start working up. Okay, thank you. So thank you very much, David. Uh, uh, Lawrence, Arisemadi, you've been working on something extra other than the last time we talked last week. We were so grateful for your presentation on the burnt area mapping. Uh, what else has you worked on? Uh, yes, I tried the chlorophyll concentration. Um, I've not been able to finalize that. I was looking for an area where I'll get some very good results. I'm still now trying several areas, several lakes in Kenya, several lakes not in Kenya. So I'm still talking with some of the guys I shared. There was a group uh, from the southern countries, uh, all the way from Eswatini, South Africa, Malawi, um, Zambia, uh, Botswana, and Namibia. I shared uh, the training links and materials with them. So there was some interest from some of them. So um, they are yet to share their input, uh, some of the use cases they're interested in. So I was still one of the guys, one of the guys from Eswatini suggested some of the links. Uh, I did run them. We, I'm still, we are still here to finalize them, get good results. I'm sure once I we finalize this, we will still share. Yep. Uh, thank you very much, Lawrence, for that good feedback. Also, an opportunity is to hear much more from you next week. And if you want, you can join one of one or few of them in the group for them to learn more from us and even meet some of our, to meet actually the instructors behind the, the great material. Thank you very much, Lawrence. Uh, Edward, sure, sure. I think you had prepared some presentation for us today. Thank you, Ken. Um, so I just not. Um, I just want to talk about the ducks. I only, I didn't get the time to put the presentation together, but let me show this thing here. Okay. Okay. So I'm sharing my screen. Okay, this guy is in my screen. Okay, so if you go to the beginner's guide folder, within it, we have a notepad called Parallel Processing with Dask. So this, note, this notebook actually gives more details on how the Dask actually works. But I'll just give an intro to it so that if you go into it, you can easily follow the examples that has been given there over the DAX and also how to load it into your projects when you are working. So normally when you load the data using the DC load or the load ARD, what it does is it pulls all the images from the database onto the system's memory. So if the area that you are working is very large, because the area is very large and the system is trying to pull all those images or the data onto the system memory, it will crash. So you will get a problem. When you are trying to, you actually see restarting kernel. 
that means the system has crashed, especially if you are dealing with a very large area. And with the memory that has been allocated as far as the system did. So to prevent that and actually load a very big area into your working area, that's when you can actually call a follow upon the task. If the area you are working with is quite small, you don't need to use DAX. But once the area you're going to work is very large, you can actually use DAX. So that's allow you to actually load all this data, not onto the memory, but somewhere. So when you need a particular area, then you call it out. So how does how does does it is that within your load ARD, you are going to introduce the DAX chunk. First of all, you import the DAX as part when you're importing your modules into your functions. Then after importing your modules, you add this line of code here, create local DAX cluster. So this create local DAX cluster will actually initiate the DAX for you to be able to use it. Then within your DC load or the load ARD function, what you do is to introduce the DAX chunk, uh, the DAX chunk module here. So here, what we are trying to tell the data is that when the data is being loaded, at every scene, at every scene, it's supposed to load 3,000 pixels of Y and X at a time. So if you didn't use the DAX chunk and you load the data, it's going to load everything onto the system. But if you specify the DAX chunk, that the time is equal to one and the X and Y, which is 3,000 pixels, it's going to load 3,000 pixels of a time scene at a, at, a, at, a, at a go. So, and doing that is going to break them into chunks for you. So looking down here, there's a perfect example here, which I want to use to explain it very clearly. There's a data that has been accessed within the system. The data that is being loaded is 57.67 megabytes. It's quite small, so it will be able, the system will be able to load it up. <clears throat> but if you apply chance to it, or if you apply DAX to it, what that is going to do is that it's going to divide the 57.67 based on the pixel size that you specify. Here you specify the pixel size of 3,000 by 3,000. So it's going to divide it based on that into several chunks. So instead of loading it one at a time, it's going to load it into four different chunks, which is actually, which is actually going to save you an extra uh, 14, uh, 39 megabytes. So anytime you need a particular data, when you depend on the chunk, when you depend on the DAX, it will help you lose the data very fast as compared to depending on the normal ARD load. And it's quite faster and it is quite easier to also use. So using the uh, the DAX, DAX array will actually help you to load your data faster. But mind you, DAX actually helps you to locate where the data is at because DAX will help you to do that breakages, divide them into chunks for you, depending on the pixel size you are going to specify. So you can also specify 5,000 pixels at a go. You can actually reduce it to Twitter, depending on how you want to do it. But the DAX actually looks for the data. It doesn't actually lose the data. So if you're able to load all these things and get the value you're actually interested, maybe NDVI, you've actually been able to do the calculation for the NDVI. The next step is for you to load the data onto the platform. And that's, that side also, some, that side, some, depending on how big the data is, sometimes get to crash the system, but don't worry. Once we've been able to load the images and see the results, you can actually depend on the DAX for further analysis. So that is actually there to help us to load larger area. But when it reached more into an in-depth calculation, sometimes the, mem the system of the memory has to count. So although the DAX has been able to help you to load the data onto the platform, mm -hmm. you are doing serious computations. Because you have to load all the actual values, maybe the NDVI or the NDWI onto the platform, the memory becomes very important here. And it can easily crash the system. So although you can use it for a, a, fee, a fair bigger size of an area of interest, when you are actually loading it, mind you, you also have to be, 
you have to also know the area that you are going to work with. So for more information on the DAX, if you go to the place that the training beginner's guide for processing with that to give in depth and also provide more examples in which you can try it at your end to see how best it actually works when you are using it. Okay, so this is the small explanation I wanted to give on the DAX. Please, any question on it? Uh, thank you for the for that. Um, okay. Uh, normally, sometimes you you see the questions come when you face challenges. <laughs> so I think uh, I will maybe try it on a different desk, on a different notebook, and then in case of any changes, then uh, I'll I'll keep writing to you. Thank you. Okay. Okay, Lauren. Uh, thank you very much, Edward, for the great presentation. I think also as a follow-up question, Stella was asking Lawrence if he's working in uh, Eswatini or formerly Swaziland. Yes, Eswatini is a member state and uh, I've been there, so I have several friends there. So when they get some challenges, they normally write uh, for maybe assistance or maybe in terms of data or maybe in terms of processing. So yes, I've been there and I know a few of the colleagues and as Eswatini is still a member, as a Monday member state. I think Stella has a follow-up question. On any particular project at the moment. Okay. Uh, so I just know a few of the colleagues there, not in any particular project at the moment, just a few friends who sometimes engage with them in case of any need, they reach out and we assist them. Okay, thank you, Lawrence. I'll reach out to you. There's a project you're working on, it's quite a bit difficult. So I'll reach out concerning the same. Thank you for mentioning that. Okay, no problem. You're welcome. I'm happy uh, some of you will be able to connect and uh, actually do much, much more. So, any other feedback from anyone else? Ogus, I can see a point. Ah, uh, I got. Uh, not not right now, not right now. Um, what well, one? Uh, no, not regretting these. Uh, just uh, to keep uh, in the back of everybody's mind, I um, I mentioned this tool called uh, Rich D. Um, actually, let me let me show something really quick. Uh, I mentioned this tool called Rich D. Um, uh, a little while ago. Uh, this is something that we're so you know we're we're trying to provide you guys with extra tools. Um, we have in the uh, Google Drive uh, this presentation on how to do uh, rich uh, DEM, the hydrological analysis based on the elevation models. So uh, some example notebooks of this should be coming shortly if anybody's looking at flooding. I, I think uh, I think somebody earlier, I don't remember who, uh, was looking at a reservoir flooding. So you know we'll we'll. Um, See if in a couple of months, the next couple of months, we can get this uh, library in to help with analyses like that. So, I believe this will be of use for these uh, flooding estimation, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, especially yes. stuff uh, David is working on. Yeah, I think this will be impressive considering. Uh... Uh, the work that I had already presented earlier on uh, on Tuckwell. So with it, I think we can combine and be able to see uh, most likely the scenarios that might happen in case we have a spillage. Uh, thank you. Yeah, I, I think that would help you. I think that would, because this is the this library has functions to tell you, you know which way the water will flow, where it will accumulate, etc. Uh, obviously, there is a lot more to the analysis than just using the library, but I, I think it may be something that's useful in your toolbox. Yeah, sure. So. Thank you, everybody. Cedric, on getting that in. So thank you very much. At least uh, we've had 40 minutes of updates uh, from every one of us. And also, uh, Edward was expecting some colleagues who are not able to join, uh, maybe to other engagements. So maybe as a follow-up point, uh, Stephen Corelli will share with us the, you can just post even the Python file in the WhatsApp group for us to look at it. 
uh, since it's a collaborative group to make things much closer home. Uh, you can also learn more from what we've done with Stella and other guys. Uh, Eric is very active on his use case in the water. Uh, David is working on some stuff. I think even he wants to present today or next week. Are you ready, David, today? Uh, not today, but uh, hopefully maybe yeah, next session, as soon as uh, we've corrected whatever problem we have with Edward, then it will be something that i uh, really, really like to present. Thank you very much, uh, David, and also Lawrence. Uh, great stuff you're working on. And also everybody, uh, thank you very much for making the sessions live, uh, actually live, as you can see, we are really live on air. Uh, very grateful for that uh, so far we've reached. Uh, so we are waiting also to work on uh, uh, Stephen Corey's blog. So I remember that is an item, action item in a few, just in one week, I'll be able to come up with an update about that. And everyone else is, uh, uh, feel free to work on your use case, which you can publish on a BA Africa website. You can actually even collaborate more, like what Stella intends to do in uh, Eswatini. Could be something that RCMAD will be very much interested. So these opportunities for collaboration and partnerships, uh, as, well as, as well as having RCMAD as a regional hub. So any other comments before we part, uh, Edward and August? Yes. yes. Can I that there is uh, a webinar question? tomorrow. <clears throat> Yes, Stephen Corel, please. There is a webinar tomorrow, right? Uh, yes, uh, we have a webinar tomorrow uh, between uh, uh, four and uh, four and five fifteen Kenyan time. Uh, of course, you are all welcome to to join. It's part of the ongoing activities that we're trying to stay ahead together with the, the whole consortia of uh, implementing partners and the establishment yeah, team yeah. of the DEA Africa. Yeah. So definitely, if you had already registered, uh, I think the link ma must have been sent already to you. If not, I think I can still uh, request that the link be shared to you so that you can register. Thank you. Uh, you very much. Working, uh, yes, Lawrence. Uh, sometimes you're not able to attend all the webinar or the, this, the live meeting. Uh, I see you, you record some of them, probably maybe going forward, because sometimes we, due to work engagements, you're not able to participate in all the meetings. And sometimes you may miss a lot in some of the use cases that are presented. How would we go about that? Maybe you can share some of the videos of the meetings or then someone can follow later. Yes, it's very much possible to share the links to the recording. Thank you so much, Lawrence, for that point. I know mm -hmm. your schedules can be sometimes very busy. Thank you, Lawrence. Uh, if can I may, um, for, for for the webinar, we'll be having uh, uh, the, the videos will be shared. Uh, it will be live on YouTube as well. So I think even if you miss it uh, later on, we can be able to share the, uh, the whole uh, webinar. Thank you. Thank you very much, David. I think also mm -hmm. the, the such recording can really help some of us who are engaged, who can even summarize a video in five minutes. Thank you so much. <laughs> You're welcome, sir. So any feedback from any of us, Edward, Auguste, Stella, before we wind up? Thank you. I think I'm done for the day. Uh, uh, August, I, I was wondering, eh? Uh, is it possible for us to think uh, air quality right now? Air quality, I am not sure. Uh, okay. I, I know there are certain things that are observable, uh, like uh, some some of the pollutants. But uh, Edward, I think that's a better question for you or Kenneth. Well, for now, the yeah, for now the data sets are available. I think five uh, piece not part. But I know that as time goes on, you will get those data to support this for the air quality processing. So as time goes on, because I think right now we are hoping to get Lancer for the whole of Africa and the radar Sentinel one also for the whole of Africa. So as time goes on, the Sentinel five P and other uh, air quality will be also added onto the platform. But for currently, we don't have we don't have them on it. 
So that will be worked on. Thank you very much uh, for the question. So any other